It's midnight and this is Vote 2024. I'm Jonathan Samuels, live from the Sky News Election Centre. Millions of people across England and Wales have been casting their votes. The counting is underway. Up for grabs are thousands of seats in 107 local authorities in England. Elections too for the Mayor of London, members of the London Assembly and 10 regional mayors. 37 police and crime commissioners will also be elected across England and Wales. And if all that wasn't enough, a parliamentary by-election for good measure in Blackpool South. A dangerous moment then for a Prime Minister lagging badly behind in the polls in a general election year. And a challenge too for a Labour leader trying to show he's ready to move into number 10 Downing Street. Hello there. Well, if the pollsters are to be believed, the Conservatives are heading for a crushing defeat this morning, which could leave Rishi Sunak's premiership in tatters. A poor showing will heap the pressure on the Prime Minister in this general election year. But despite lagging behind Labour in the polls, Mr Sunak has been attempting to regain the initiative, forcing through his Rwanda plan and making a series of eye-catching policy announcements. So, will it be enough? And Rishi Sunak's not the only one under pressure. Labour's Sir Keir Starmer also faces a challenge to prove that he and his party are really ready for government. Well, we will be with you through the night. Live from Counts, right across England, we'll also bring you the results as they come in. You'll see them at the bottom of your screen and we'll analyse what they mean. Keeping track of those results and breaking them down for us is our political correspondent, Gurpreet Narwan. Evening to you. And also helping us interpret the data and what it all means is our political correspondent, Tamara Cohen. Tamara, great to see you. Uh, a huge amount at stake not only in the next few hours, but into the weekend. Absolutely. These are a set of election results which will not only tell you who will be running the local services you use every day at a time of significant financial strain, but we have a Prime Minister in a general election year, and these are results which will give us a sense of whether there are any glimmers of hope for the Conservatives. Is this real votes, not just opinion polls? Is there any sense that it's less bleak than the polls look? Or... Uh, and for Labour, are the sort of gains which we expect them to make uh, tonight going to be big enough to take them all the way to Downing Street? The Conservatives are in little doubt they're looking at significant losses tonight, but we're going to look at whether those numbers show whether Labour are on course to, for a majority. OK, tomorrow we'll chat more uh, in a second. Uh, right now, let's look at what is happening through the course of the night. Gerpreet is at the screen. Gerpreet. Well, Jonathan, 107 councils going to the polls tonight, 2,500 seats. This is the grid. It's looking pretty drab at the moment, but you can expect throughout the night that this is going to turn into a patchwork of red, blue, yellow, maybe a bit of green in there. About a quarter of these councils, 27, are all council elections. That means all the seats are up for grabs. It means we could get some pretty wild changes in control in those councils. I'm going to talk you through some of the key battlefields in a second, but before I do that, I want to show you the current state of play. Labour are defending 43 councils tonight, Conservatives 18, but both parties are defending around 1,000 seats. And it's the Tories who are on the defensive tonight. We think they could lose in the region of about 500 seats. Anything more than that, well, it's getting pretty destabilising for Rishi Sunak. 250 seats, they lose about 250 seats. The party could spin that as a victory. They, it could suggest that they're doing better than the polling suggests. Labour, for their part, will want to be picking up about 350 seats to show that they're serious about government. And I said I'd take you back to some of the key battlefields. Firstly, the West Midlands. There's a tense mayoral contest going on there and it's going to be a keen area of focus for both major parties at the general election. Labour will be hoping that they can make grounds in places like Walsall and Solihull as well as Dudley. And further south in Hampshire, well, 
The Lib Dems will be on the offensive. They will be eyeing up places like Fareham and Portsmouth to consolidate gains that they've made in nearby Eastleigh. Now, you're going to hear a lot tonight about what this might mean for the general election with all the usual health warnings and caveats. But there are some lessons that we can learn from history. Take a look at this chart. 1997, Tony Blair's landslide victory for the Labour Party. And you could see that the party started to make ground in local government several years earlier. They became the largest party in local government in the early 90s. The Conservatives managed something similar in the noughties ahead of the coalition government. And take a look at this. Labour have become the largest party in local government. They achieved that last year and they'll want to build the momentum tonight. You'll notice that we're not seeing anything like the kind of share that we got in the 90s. That's because the landscape of local elections has changed a lot. The independents are a much bigger force than they used to be. But nevertheless, Labour will be wanting to add about 350 seats to that. Gerpri, thank you very much. We'll be filling those charts with colour through the early hours. We're expecting our first declaration probably in about half an hour's time.